If you've been having troubles understanding how to use recursive common table expressions, you just got to watch this video. Uh, so my name is Chris Wenzel, and I'm really good at breaking down complex ideas into simple to understand examples. And so let's get at it and let me show you how these darn things work. All right. So for my first example of a common table expression, I want to go over a real basic one where we count to 10. And this is going to show us some of the basic elements that are in all the recursive common table expressions. So one thing that these all share is an anchor member. And the anchor member is used to initialize the recursive common table expression. So this is going to initialize the, um, the first part of the query. and when the um, recursive query starts, it needs to have a seed value. And here for our count, we're going to start the seed at one. And then we're going to get into the recursive member. And the recursive member is going to be the part that kind of builds the query up. So in this case, we're going to take that seed member and then build upon it. And we are going to add one to it. So here we're going to, in a sense, call our recursive member again. And then we're going to add one to it. So we're going to take our recursive member n, which is right here, and then we're going to add 1 to it. Had a seed member of 1, so the second time through it's going to be 2, and then it's going to come back through, return a value of 2, and we're going to add 1 to it. It's going to be 3, and so on and so forth. And then we're going to encounter the third piece of a recursive common table expression, which is the termination check which helps us end the whole darn thing. Because if we didn't have a termination check, it would just keep tumbling along until it ran out of memory, or as we would call an infinite loop. So the termination check just has it quit. So in this case, we're gonna stop counting when n is less than 10. And then the invocation is what starts the whole thing up. So let's try running this, and you're gonna find that this thing's gonna start out counting at one and then move right on up until n is less than 10. And if you look at the results here, as it moves through, it moves up. And then when it end got to be at 10, boom, it stopped. So now let's try adding a different seed value. So you can see what happens there. So let's try making our seed value 5. So you can see what happens. So you're going to see that n no longer is going to start at 1. It should start at 5. And there you can see it starts at five. We don't, we no longer get 10 rows because our termination still is 10, right? Let's make our termination 15 now. And this should now go to 15. And there you can see now it goes from five to 15. Now the other thing I could do is change this to three and now it should count by three. So it should go from five to I think eight here. And you can see it goes 5, 8, 11, so it counts by threes. So you can see here, now I'm able to kind of play with the recursive nature of this by playing with the common core pieces. The anchor member, changing the initial seed value. I changed the increment, which was the recursive nature of it. And then I changed when it stopped. So now that you can see some of the basics, let's try something a little more complicated. And what I'm going to try to do here... So now let's go in and try um, to define a factorial using a recursive um, common table expression. So if you're familiar with factorial, how they work is, is it's basically a number getting multiplied by the prior number. So one factorial equals one. And let's see here, let me get up my screen. And for instance, we paste in here two factorial it's basically two times one, or it just happens to be two times one factorial. So you're gonna start seeing some maybe recursive nature happening, or you could think of three factorial as being three times two times one, or if you think about it, three factorial really isn't that, it's kind of looking like three times two factorial, isn't it? And then in if you wanted to, you could go on and generalize this to really say then that, whoops, let me put comments in here, that 
n factorial really is the same thing as saying it's n times n minus 1 factorial. So that's kind of the mathematical way of doing it. So there's a there's a way to write this recursively, right? And it and and this goes all the way back to one. So our goal is to try to represent this as a recursive um, common table expression. So what I'm going to do is take this as my starting point, and I'm going to rename it. But we're going to make a factorial thingy out of it. So I'm going to change this to um, factorial we'll call this CTE and then I'm gonna have to I'm gonna select one here and then um, so we're gonna do one as n and that's gonna be kind of like an index and then I'm gonna do one as the result and you'll see what I what's happening here I'll call this fact that's gonna be our answer and then I'm going to union that with our, let's call this factorial too. And then we're not going to go very far down the line because the factorials blow up pretty fast. So we'll just go out like five. Okay. And then, um, and we'll, we'll do n plus one, right? Again. And then the trick here is I want to times it right and I'm going to do times n plus 1 times the result of the factorial that came back and I think this should work and I'm going to put these comments out so you guys can kind of see how this piece goes together too and of course we gotta make this all good right so we'll make this CT factorial and we'll select N and our fact, which is our answer. And then if I did this right, whoops, we now should get an answer. And we do. So let's put this up. And here you can see um, four factorials, 24. And just to sh show you, if I did select um, four times three times two times one, that should equal 24, right? Of course it does. And then let's do um, this times five that's the other one five times that and just run all this stuff okie doke so five factorials 120 that's this answer 24 is this answer so there you have it this is how you can do a um, calculate a factorial using common recursive common table expressions as always, thank you for watching my videos and I hope you were able to get something out of my lesson here on recursive table expressions. If you wanna learn more about CTEs, please go to my website, www.essentialsql.com. Also, hit the subscribe button on this video so you can learn more about SQL. And I'll talk to you later. Take care.